off the horse. Spinning so fast. It was so dizzy. Something grabbed me. The dancing figures. I was looking at them. They had pretty wings. 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 Pretty wings.
Her hand nudged one of his disgusting talons. The thing opened one of its red bloodshot eyes and woke up in a frenzy, angered and swiping at us. It growled and we ran. We were almost in the clear when my mother fell on the steps of our home and the thing dragged her by her feet back through the doorway. Adrenaline filled terror filled me as her words echoed in my head. Keep going, find somewhere safe. There was no helping the sound of my feet smashing through the leaves in the dark woods. Fearful, every falling step and no matter how fast I ran. And always walking. The thing called out, catching my breath. The sound of my heart pounded against my chest, and I sat down beneath a tall shrubbery. Any sound made me think the thing was near. The whipping of the leaves behind me grew louder and louder as the thing drew closer. Grabbing a branch in the ground next to me, I threw it as far as I could so it would lose track of me. It ripped through the air and landed with a strong thunk. The sound of the thing then whipped past me in the other direction. Swiftly, I climbed a tree, my nails dug into the rough bark, slicing my fingers open, ripping my sleeves as I climbed, holding back tears from the pain. The thing wanted my pain. And it could sense it, and I refused to give it the satisfaction. Gritting my teeth, I hoisted myself into a higher branch to hide. The thing always knew I'd go back to my mother. We've tried to run away before, but no matter where we went, it would always find us. No matter how dark it got, it could see us. Shuddering, I prayed that we would no longer fall prey to its hunger. This would be the last time. We wouldn't act alone like all the times before. And I waited for what felt like an eternity. You came for this. No, 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 no. Until I saw lights in the distance. No, get off of me. That's my family. You can't take me away. You can't take me away from my family. That's his, that's his dad. The, that, that, that's his dad. That's his dad. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com slash smallmind. I don't know about you, but I'm always trying to streamline my to-do list. Whether it's using an app to get... God, we, 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 we didn't know that that's okay. Because, because, I, we, I thought it was the pivotal of Nima to like a green Nima. Like, who, like a shadow of shit and stuff. And I, the daughter? Oh, that dad don't get out of jail. He <laughs> gonna cast the hands though. I'm scared, guys, because he be on my bed. He always keeps on about me. Next video. The bitch? Yeah. Oh, I wanna do it to him. So cute. So this the story, story takes place when I was about 16, 16 years old. old. At my school, I played for the volleyball team, and every year we would go to a camp and do volunteer work. It was in the middle of nowhere. When we got to the camp, we immediately started work till 8 p.m. This was around October, so it was already dark at 8. My two friends and I were sitting around the fire, trying to figure out something we could do so we weren't so bored. We heard that there was a small river down the hill from the camp, and we thought we could check it out. The problem was is that it was someone's property, and the owner of the camp told us to not disturb him since the guy was a little strange. We weren't really supposed to leave the camp, but being 16 years old, we loved breaking the rules. We walked about 10 minutes in the camp and finally reached the river. It was bigger than we expected, and there was a large wooden bridge that crossed it. The bridge was about 20 feet long and it was big enough to let a truck roll. My two friends and I decided to go under the bridge and check it out. As we were walking by the shoreline, we saw two headlights off in the distance coming towards the bridge, so we melted underneath it and hid. We then let the truck roll over our heads to the other side. My friends and I were there for a while, just talking and throwing rocks in the water. It was about 8.30 at this time, and now it was pretty much pitch black. That's when we started to hear a slow rumble in the distance. The same truck had come back, and this time it was moving much slower. We stayed put under the bridge, stifling our laughter. 
Eventually, the truck moved over the bridge, but rather than going Wait, over from the other side, the truck stopped stop. right on top of us. Oh my the only God. thing you could hear How was the rushing water and the hum of the engine. Then, the door of the truck swung open, and out came a loud thump on top of the bridge. Then we heard a loud scream, saying, I know you're out there! I'm gonna find you! I looked at my friends, and they were both shaking in fear. This must have been the crazy property owner, and he seemed pissed that we were on his land. He started screaming and saying he was going to hurt us if he finds us. We could see that he had a flashlight and was swinging it around looking for us. We heard loud thumps as he walked around a little bit, calling out for us, and thank God he never went under the bridge. Eventually, it went silent, and it sounded as if he went back into his truck. I was too terrified to move. We sat there for about 10 minutes, and then my one friend, who we'll call Trevor, whispered in my ear, saying that we have to go. I gave him a quick nod, and in slow motion we moved out from under the bridge. We started to army crawl on the shoreline of the river, and I remember looking behind me to see the top of the bridge. I saw a white board F-150, and the driver's seat was the man, staring right at me with a sinister smile, and he even gave me a little wave. At that moment, I screamed and ran. My friend saw me run and took off after me. I could hear screaming from behind us. I took a quick glance behind me and saw that he was chasing after us, and I couldn't quite make out the object in his hand. I ran into the forest and ducked behind a bush. It was pitch black in the forest, and we couldn't hear a thing. We sat there for a while, just shaking. The man never walked by us, and we never heard him. After we gathered our courage, we got up and walked back to camp, got into our tents, and tried to fall asleep. The next morning, we talked to the camp owner about the man that owned the property of the river. The camp owner said that he didn't know much about the man, but he knows that he has some mental problems and he'd been accused of assault. I am so happy that we were able to escape from underneath the bridge. I can't imagine what would have happened if he caught us. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you would like to support the channel, check out the merch link in the video description. Like, subscribe!